we joked off camera about how sometimes if you see a boom mic in a film, it's not the end of the world and somehow it's almost endearing because you feel like a kind of a kinship or? Mm -hmm. For me, it's, it's just, it's not something I would want in my own films and it's not necessarily something I'm looking for in movies, but if I see it, it doesn't bother me the way it bothers some people. Like some people, I feel like they watch a movie just to look for little uh, mistakes, whatever they might be in the film. And I'm the opposite of that as a viewer. I want to be involved in the movie. I want to be lost in the world of the movie. And so I'm also, so, sometimes I'm almost willing to overlook things, uh, the errors of you know, logic in, in the screenplay. If, forget about boom mics, you know, if I get taken away by a film. And that's kind of actually something I, I look for in movies and it's something I try to do with my own films too, you know? Why do you think it's it's almost endearing, or maybe I'm just putting that word into? I it. think it's I think it's when I first started to see it when I was a teenager or whatever. It just you know, I noted it for what it was, and I just sort of was amused. I was like, well, that must be a low budget movie, or that was they didn't have time to do that. And then you know, once I started making films and really dealing with those those time and, and budgetary concerns, uh, and knowing and learning more about other people's work too. Sometimes I'll see you know in a certain film I might see a dolly track and go, oh, that's there because. They didn't have the time to redo that take. They didn't have the time, you know, it was being rushed through post or whatever. And, and I know that because I know the backstory on these things and I know how it can go uh, having, you know, now that I'm doing this professionally. So it is kind of endearing to me. It's almost like you're seeing a little bit of the world, a, a little bit of behind the scenes world while you're watching the film at the same time. Right, and especially you know? too in this new Instagram um, sort of perfection era, it's, it's kind of nice to see things that aren't that perfect. Well, that's why, that's why people, myself included, like to watch movies from you know the 70s or the 80s and even going up through into the 90s. I think there's a certain point where CGI became a bigger part of filmmaking and then green screen became a big part of it. And now it's almost like you don't trust the images you're seeing in any film, in any, you know, especially bigger budget movies, you're not trusting those crowds of extras. You're not trusting the location that they say it is. You're not trusting uh, the, the action sequences, you know, how much stunts were involved in that because you know that they could do it all in post, essentially. Spend a lot of money and do it in post as opposed to a movie like, say, Sorcerer, which is one of my favorite movies, a William Friedkin movie, where you just know that they were in the jungle with those trucks and they had to deal with the realities of making that you know, pulling off those scenes. And it just, I just think it's a different mental effect it has on the audience to know that somebody had to physically make that stuff happen in front of the camera. Even with it was with miniatures or with rotoscoping or, you know, uh, this type of stuff, like say they did with the original Star Wars films, that's a whole different world than say what people are doing now with the same type of uh, material, you know, same type of genre, where it's just all CG and, and, uh, and green screen. So that's, and that's something in my own work that I'm, I'm pretty, I guess you could even say militant about. I like to uh, do practical effects and, you know, all the time if I can. And if I have to use CG, it's gonna be more to enhance what's there versus build something out of nothing. That's interesting. So you, yeah, not trusting an image. So it's not just fake news, but fake images. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, because everything's the tools have gotten, the technology's gotten so good, and the tools have gotten into everybody's hands, so that that's just the the way people make video. You could say, I guess you could probably say now, because whether it's television or movies or short videos people are making, that's just the way people do things, and so it is harder to trust what you're looking at, uh, you know, and in, in not only in like fantasy films, but in, you know, documentaries or, you know, things that are positioning themselves as, as reality, I think it's harder to trust those type of, the images in those movies too. Right, like Sherman's March versus, mm -hmm. I hate to throw reality TV under the bus, but you know, just something like that where oh, it's and, so raw. And, well, there's, there's that side of it. And also if you know, like Josephine and I know, it's, it's funny, like there was a period where there was a lot of interchange between the movies we were making, you know, the, the features we were doing in reality TV. And I would have actors, you know, that, that I directed that would then show up in a reality series playing roles. 
And you know, it, that just completely blows it out of the water. Then we'd meet with friends who would tell us stuff too, that were, they were working on these shows, and they'd tell us how these shows were essentially scripted and everything was, and look, maybe the general public knows this stuff now, but not to the degree still that insiders know it. And so that just completely blows it out of the water in terms of you know, the narratives that are being built on these shows or where these you know, real people are coming from. Uh, you know, they're just actors looking for a gig a lot of the time. So it's, it, just, it just completely changes your, uh, your perception of those type of shows, you know. Do you think people almost want to believe that those people are real? Like oh yeah, they do, they do. They definitely want to believe that's otherwise why would they keep coming back to watching it you know why would the bachelor still be on i mean it's absurd and everyone knows it's absurd but people still keep watching it and i think a show like that it's obvious more and more over time it's become obvious that the people who are on those shows maybe in the first couple of seasons there was a bit more like you know actual real emotion there or a real idea of finding a guy or finding a girl but I feel like now it's just a lot of people who are, the first thing they're thinking about is promoting themselves, promoting their brand. They've, they've got a song that they did that was a hit somewhere. <laughs> they've got a this, they got a that. And, and actually that's, you know, and I'm not gonna, I'll admit, we watched those shows too. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say, I don't watch that stuff. We did, but we did stop watching it. Um, one of the reasons we stopped watching them was because it was becoming more and more obvious people were just there to promote brands and to use as a stepping stone to some kind of a career as a host, a TV host or something like that. And then you just, I mean, you know it's not real, but then there's a whole other level of like fakery going on there and you're just like, okay, I just, I can't, <laughs> I can't do I can't do it anymore. Well, know? full disclosure, I got um, hooked into Joe Millionaire when it first uh -huh. came out and I had sworn off television and it, it took me out of my, my abstinence, so. Well, well sometimes those, those type of shows can be fun, you mm -hmm. know, competition shows and reality shows. Like, I'm not gonna say that I'm, you know, immune to their charms or the, right. and sometimes that's what you want if you've had a long day, like you, you know, you're just tired and you just wanna see some entertainment, light entertainment. Uh, I get it, I really get it. And then you're addictive too. Um, so I, you know, but yeah, but there's a, under the surface there, there is like, yeah, there's a real, uh, especially on the shows that are kind of pushing for that, like we got people from the heartland who are want to make their big break or we got people who want to find love and you're like, really? I, you know, it seems more and more they just have brands to promote or, or something. They want to use that TV, you know, ex exposure to further some kind of another agenda that they've got. <laughs> So. Excellent. Nice. Excellent. We made a whole horror movie about that. So oh, you did? We did. Oh, oh let's talk about we it. Did. Let's talk about well, it. Well, it's, it's fresh in my mind because I was just talking about it the other day. We, we did this movie called Within the Woods, which is a slasher film. On paper, it's a slasher film. It was a third part of a series that I had uh, created called Camp Blood. And the story was like, I think it was five people. They're, in, they're on this competition show. They're dropped into the woods where these murders happened, and they've got a... Uh, stay the night. They got to stay 24 hours without leaving. They can't chicken out and leave, and otherwise they won't, they'll lose. You know, they won't get the million dollars. Anyone who stays there at the end is, gets a million dollars. So then it just becomes this, you know, kind of like people start getting bumped off for real. First, people are getting scared by the producers who engineered gags, you know, to scare them off. Then people start getting killed for real. And then, of course, the whole mystery aspect of it is who done it. You know, which one of these people is is the killer who wants to kill off all the rest so they can win the million dollars. And the reveal at the end was that the character who did all the murders was this female singer, this sort of uh, Kelly Clarkson type, you know, wannabe, who uh, had a CD and had a single, and she's just, this is all she ever talks about and she's obsessed with. And to her, in her warped mind, becoming, even if she had to kill people, and, and it was out there, she wanted to get fame. She wanted to get her name out there. This was her way to get her name out there. So the movie for us was, it was a you know, continuing a series, but for me and for Josephine, it was a chance to do something cool, kind of comment on, this was in 2005 too, when reality shows were, were really big or Survivor was a big one. You know, these type of things were dropping people in the middle of the woods and let them, you know, let's see who the winner is. Let's see who, who wins, who makes it to the end. And so we're kind of commenting on that kind of stuff and on just people's, some people's just obsession with fame and obsession to be recognized for something, even if they have to kill for it. So that was the thing that, that was sort of the aspect of it that made me excited about making the movie. Because other than that, you're, you know, you're making another sequel. So it's all about trying to reinvent it and find a way to 
make it interesting for you as a filmmaker.